everybody. My name's Jeff Ryan. I'm the director of North American Sales for HME Aaron's Fox. We're busy here at HME right now getting ready for FDIC and uh, we're really excited to be introducing a new series called Fire Truck University, um, which is really based on things that are happening in the marketplace and trying to get education out there for the fire departments that are in the market for fire trucks uh, moving forward. Uh, with that said, I'd like to introduce you to Noah. Uh, Noah, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and uh, why are you here? So I'm Noah DeVelder. I'm a chief chassis engineer here, and I do a lot of the powertrain items as well. I have also been working on integrating all the EPA 27 emissions engines into our chassis. Okay. So as part of the Fire Truck University, we thought, what a great topic, since there's so much misinformation out there on engine emissions. What does it mean? What does it kind of cost? You know, does it uh, make my fire truck bigger, longer? Um, let's just start kind of like the timeline of emissions. Um, just take us back a little bit um, where we were, where we're at today, and where we're going forward, uh, just an overview. So currently we're in EPA 2024 emissions, and all of these engines are compliant through 2027, and that's where the big change is happening. Okay, so 2027. So what does that kind of look like as far as uh, 2027? Is it end of 27, beginning of 27? Uh, basically, it starts January 1st of 2027 is when the emissions are uh, granted in that Cummins can no longer sell fire generation engines after that date. Okay, that makes sense. So current uh, models of Cummins motors, uh, what do we have today? Like what, what, are the, what are the motors? What are the models? What does that look like? So our current lineup is the V6.7, the L9, the X12, and the X15. Okay, so the X15. And then in 2027, uh, what will those models look like then? So the B6.7 is becoming the B7.2. The L9 and the X12 are becoming the X10. And the X15 is being replaced by another X15. Okay, so that's going to say the X15. Okay, so when we look at, I know, like, uh, not knowing a ton about motors, but, I mean, people seem to always be uh, worried about what is the horsepower and what is the torque. Um, so what will we be seeing with horsepowers and torque um, 2027 compared to what it is today? Is it changing? It's relatively the same. So a lot of the lineup is is similar to what we've currently been buying, and it's really common in the apparatus industry. So the B7.2 figures have not been released yet. For the X10, there's a 450 horsepower, 1,250 pound figure torque variant, and that'll bolt up to a 3,000 transmission, similar to the way the L9 450 does right now. Uh, the, there will also be a high torque version of the X10 where it has 1,650 pound feet of torque, but still at 450 horsepower. That will require a 4,000 transmission as if it were the X12 today that requires the, the 4,000. The X15 will be 605 horsepower, 1,850 pound feet of torque with a 4,000 transmission. Oh, wow. Okay. So if I heard you right, then basically with the L9 going away and the X12 going away, the X10 kind of becomes a hybrid of those two in a sense. The X15 kind of stays the same, if you will, just the new emissions, uh, it matches or will meet that. Correct. They basically wanted to mold that offering into one option, essentially. So the markets that the X12 and the L9 were, the X10 is just one engine basically within that. Okay, so talk a little bit about implementation timeline. Like, I want to get into, like, what is new with the emissions, but, like, let's set the expectation of timeline. What does that look like if I'm buying a fire truck? Like, when does this impact me? Um, what do I need to be aware of from a timeline implementation? So the X15 timeline is slightly different than the other engines. That will be starting Q2 of 2026, where the new engine will be... Uh, available and the old engine will go away. For the X10, originally the plan was to start Q1 2026 with the X10 release. Cummins has since moved that back to Q1 of 2027. So, and that basically lines right with the EPA guidelines and where they're allowed to sell the legacy engines through. Uh, the B7.2 also follows that same. So you can start purchasing those in Q1 of 2027. Okay, so if they had to push that timeline closer to when the EPA mandates the changes uh, take place, um, what are we doing or what is the industry doing as kind of bridging? Is there like any leeway? Uh, is, there, is there a buffer? Like what does that look like as far as uh, the implementation if you can't meet it or is there just, you gotta meet it? 
Yeah, that's a, that's a big question, obviously. Most of the apparatus industry with pumpers being L9s, uh, we had anticipated there being a year overlap where we could buy X10s and still have safety stock of L9s, install those kind of interchangeably and kind of building those at the same time. With that no longer being the case, uh, the EPA does have a grace period after the emissions change. So Cummins can't sell us engines after January 1st of 2027 of the legacy variants, but we're allowed to install them into vehicles until March 31st of 2027. So that's where that transition period will essentially be where we can, we'll be building some L9, X12, previous generation X15s even, but we also will be starting a full production of all the new engines. Okay, that's great. Um, so then if that's the timeline implementation, as far as like beta test motors, like how we know, I mean, cause I definitely want to get into like, what did the new motor make up? You know, what, what, are, what are they? Um, but help me understand um, just from like how we get those motors, like do we get locks to make sure they fit? Like what does that look like from an engineering standpoint? From an engineering standpoint, it's uh, a lot of CAD and back and forth directly with Cummins. I've had, we've had CAD models and data releases over the last year and a half or so. And that's kind of starting to ramp up as they're going through alpha testing right now. Uh, beta testing will be next spring for the X10 specifically. And that's kind of our key timeline to start integrating, doing a lot of testing of our own, making sure that we meet within the emission standards that come in set with the EPA and that our installation is approved by Cummins essentially. Okay. So when we get that beta motor in then, like, so just explain real quick, like what are some of those testings that we do? I heard you say EPA, but I'm guessing there's cooling and there's a lot that goes with that. Um, with the new emissions engines. Yeah, definitely. You know, there's there's a lot of tests involved. Cummins has an entire process for it. Um, it's called an IQA, an installation quality audit. And that's anytime there's emission change or you're integrating a new engine, you have to go through one of those. And that's Cummins stamp of approval saying that, you know, they will warranty that engine and that the engine is installed in a manner that aligns with their EPA testing that they did for the emission system. So within that, there's a lot of electronic testing, engine mounting, uh, testing with the exhaust system and cooling testing specifically being kind of one of the bigger things that most people think of when you think about a new engine test. Yeah, I would imagine. So that's a very important piece of that. Um, okay, thanks for that. So we talked a little bit about um, the new models that are coming. Um, I kind of want to get into just what, what are these new motors? Like, are they completely redesigned? You mentioned like the X15, so the X15, I'm guessing it, probably so red, but I mean, what are the different components that make up these motors and what are some of the things that you've learned from Cummins that we should be expecting? Yeah, so if you take a look at an X10 compared to an L9, for example, that currently is released, uh, you'll see drastic differences in the engine architecture. It's a completely new design that uh, is uniquely new to Cummins. Specifically with the X15, it is drastically different than the old engine. Um, Cummins has released some figures for the new X15 compared to the old one in terms of a weight. Uh, it's actually 50 pounds lighter than the prior generation, which would you wouldn't think of that, but there's a lot of advancements with casting technology and you know efficiency from man ease of manufacturing that they've done to uh, lighten up that engine. So the whole reason they're doing this is to meet emissions. Um, how are they doing that? Like, it sounds like there's a very strict standards on what they have to meet. So there is obviously a ton of technology that goes into that. So what are some of the big things that are different? Like, is there different ways they test? Like, can you walk us through just kind of some of those differences? Yeah. So the biggest change with 2027 and compared to prior emissions level changes is, you know, there, the test method has changed. So obviously there's a reduction in NOx and greenhouse gases as there are in every, uh, change over year but the test parameter has changed specifically. So what that means is previously, all the engine manufacturers were allowed a 15 minute warm up period with the engines before they had to actually test the tailpipe emissions. That has gone away. The EPA said starting in 2027, you can't do that anymore. And that's created a lot of specific challenges. So now from ignition, the engines are literally allowed to emit above the, the levels that are set that are even more stringent than the current 2024 levels are. What are the components that are going on to these motors that will help them pass the new EPA? Like, what does that look like? So the way greenhouse gases and uh, NOx is reduced in the after treatment system is through a lot of heat. Uh, those after treatments have to operate a certain temperature to be able to do that. 
in order to do that from ignition, you need to add a heater into the after treatment to be able to accomplish that. So what Cummins is introducing starting in 2027 is a 48 volt alternator that's dedicated to heating elements that are in the DPF and the SDR. Right. So is that a separate alternator that's just for that then, like has nothing to do with any of the other aspects of the truck? Correct. It'll be a dedicated alternator just for that system. It'll actually be considered a piece of emissions equipment um, from the EPA standpoint. So it cannot be touched by anybody, by us. Uh, you know, we have to stay within the guidelines of all the testing that they do. Okay. And then, so from just uh, speaking strictly about emissions, what other components will make up um, the ability to pass the test? Like it, it sounds like there's one component there. I'm just trying to get a sense of how many components that aren't on the trucks today will be on the trucks tomorrow. For sure. So the engines will still use DEF the same way that they currently do. And in order to accomplish that, you know, there's kind of a, a black box in the after treatment system that, you know, allows the emissions to get cleaned through. And with that process, Cummins has had to enlarge the after treatments quite significantly. Um, there's been photos released publicly of the X-15 after treatment, and it's about double the size of the current system. Uh, and we expect that the X-10 will be pretty much in line with that as well. So those are the components I'll help. So those physically have to go somewhere on a fire truck then. Um, so what are, the, or what is the industry looking at? Uh, trucks get bigger um, because that all has to fit somewhere. Um, can you just give us a little insight on that? Yeah, obviously matter cannot occupy space at the same time, multiple components. So we are looking at packaging and I imagine every fire truck manufacturer is of, hey, where are we gonna put these after treatments? And, uh, you know, with the increased space and the additional requirements that they have, you know, how does that affect the vocations that we offer? How does that affect, you know, these wildland vehicles, these pumpers, you know, tankers, aerials, so to speak, of where those are, are packaged, essentially. Uh, you know, you can run those systems in line, similar to the way everyone does it right now. You could vertically stack them if you've similar to refuse vehicles that you see. Um, you know, there's a lot of thought process going on right now. And I don't think it's a defined science yet of anybody. I think there's a lot of thought process that still needs to go through. And, you know, whoever comes up with the best idea in a few years, that's what everyone else will be doing. Sure. Sounds like the fire industry for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you for that. Um, so you talked a little bit about the components then that go onto the motor um, to help pass EPA um, from a performance standpoint. And when I say performance, um, are there because there are new motors, uh, are there different uh, components inside of that motor that might not have to do with EPA that help with maybe noise or uh, mileage, um, anything that is that you've picked up on that'll be new? Yeah, so Cummins has released a uh, that the X-15 will have dual overhead cam shafts dedicated. Uh, the previous generation had a single overhead cam and a dedicated cam for the fuel system. Uh, that will be changing to a traditional dual overhead cam architecture that you've seen in a lot of past car engines. And with that, it leads to a lot of increased efficiency. So Cummins has already published that the X-15 engine is more fuel efficient than the previous generation. And we you know, anticipate that the X-10 will probably be similar. Obviously, there's nothing to directly compare it with with the previous generation. But you know, with those modern advancements, uh, we, we see that those will be an improvement to the end user in terms of fuel efficiency. Okay, that's really interesting. Any other insight on costs or any other predictions? So one thing that we can use to look at is what have price increases been like in the past when there's big emissions changes? And, you know, kind of looking back at that, you know, we see five, 10 percent increases, you know, year over year. And then we'll see sometimes larger increases when there's big EPA changes. You know, when we're looking at a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollar price increase, you know, we're talking about thousands of percents increase in price. Sure. And it's just difficult to see that we would that we would be um, seeing that. Obviously, these companies are trying to amortize their engineering costs and development over these vehicles, and that probably plays a part into it as well. Um, I know that there's a lot of fire truck manufacturers that have uh, access to current emissions engines. Uh, we've got our core program here at HME where we've got uh, lots of access um, to get trucks with the current emissions engines. Um, maybe just give us your wisdom on, you know, why would I buy a truck that has current emissions engines versus 2027 emissions engines? You know, why would I do that? Why, why would I not go for the latest and greatest, uh, 2027? Definitely. So, uh, the big thing is, is timeline. So Cummins is going to allow us to buy L9's engines 
and purchase those through September of 2026. And then those deliveries will be just before December of 2026. And then, as we said earlier, you know, we can build on those until March 31st of 2027. Uh, that's the same for everybody. That's not unique to HME. So those current generation engines, they're going to be available this entire time until the changeover. You know, in, in terms of the old versus the new, the older engines are, are simpler, to be quite frank. You know, the, to get the emissions levels that the EPA is, you know, requiring, it, it, they're more complex engines and there's more components that could, in theory, fail. So I would probably drive somebody into the current generation engines because of price and complexity, um, especially if there's re they're readily available, you know, here at Goa, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. I learned a lot. Um, very knowledgeable on this subject. Um, for the fire departments out there, uh, hopefully this was super educational and it provided some clarity around the 2027 emissions. Um, for the fire departments that are out there in the market for a custom pumper and would prefer to have a current emissions engine as part of the HME core program, we've got several stock slots available. And we also at times have inventory on the ground with current emissions engines. Give us a call. We'd love to earn your business. And we really appreciate you taking the time to learn a little bit about motors.